How to record the acoustic guitar in PreSonus Studio One. Today's video, I'm gonna show you every step of the process, every piece and item that you'll need in order to record the guitar in PreSonus Studio One. You'll be able to see everything I'm seeing on my screen. I'll take you through each detailed step of the process because it's what I do. I just wanna encourage you to hit the like and subscribe button to help support the channel for more content just like this as well. Now let's get started how to record the acoustic guitar. So first we need to cover the things that you obviously need to record an acoustic guitar. Number one, you need some sort of acoustic guitar. If your acoustic guitar has a pickup inside, basically meaning you can plug a guitar cable into your guitar somewhere, you can record guitar direct. You don't have to have a microphone whenever you're recording acoustic guitar. Now we'll tell you that a direct recorded acoustic guitar, as you're going to hear in this video, doesn't sound quite as good as recording it with a microphone. But if you don't have a microphone, you probably want to go direct. So some sort of acoustic guitar that has some sort of pickup inside of it, a guitar cable will be good for you. Everyone else, you probably want to look at getting some sort of microphone. I'm going to be using the Rode NT2A. It is a large diaphragm condenser microphone that's pretty affordable, especially if you're just getting started out. I recommend you get some sort of large diaphragm condenser mic. You can also use something as simple as a Shure SM57 which is a dynamic mic, it's very affordable, it's also very rugged. Something to hold your microphone on, you need some sort of either boom stand, you can get stands that go on your desktop, something to hold your microphone. Of course, you'll need a microphone cable as well. Microphone cables are referred to as XLR cables, they should look similar to this. And at each end you have a male and a female end with three prongs. This is what's going to connect your microphone into your audio interface. The audio interface I'm using today is my Universal Audio Apollo Twin. This is a pretty fancy audio interface. You could use any sort of Scarlett 2i2, maybe a PreSonus audio box you might be using as well. No matter what the audio interface is, you need it to be hooked up to your computer, either a USB cable, Firewire, or Thunderbolt and you need to make sure that it has a microphone input or a direct input if you're using that guitar cable I mentioned earlier. Last but not least, you'll need some sort of headphones. You can either use these over-ear headphones I've got here. These are from Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pros. Any sort of headphones that are gonna especially keep noise from coming outside. So when you're recording and you have a click track happening inside your headphones, you don't want that bleed coming out and being picked up by a microphone. If you're a musician, you might also have a pair of in-ear monitors that you use when you're playing live. Those will work great as well, especially if you're getting starting out. We don't really want to use speakers or monitors when we're in a recording situation because the thing about speakers is the noise is going to be picked up by our microphone. So better to have isolation with headphones than to use something like speakers. And as far as the software goes, my Universal Audio has to use this software called console. Console is how I control my audio interface before we go into PreSonus Studio One. If your audio interface doesn't have software like this, if it just goes straight into Studio One, that's totally fine. Universal Audio just gives you a lot of options. You can load plugins, use Unison preamps, fancy things like that. If you've got all those things in order, or at least something similar to what I've already mentioned, of course you need PreSonus Studio One. Let me go ahead and fire up Studio One. The things I'm covering in this video, whether you're using Studio One Prime, which is their free version, or you're using Studio One Artist, I use the Artist version for years and years and years, or if you have the professional version, they're all gonna be just fine for recording something simple like acoustic guitar and maybe a vocal. Once you have Studio One loaded up on the screen, you're gonna be met with the setup window. I've covered this in many of my videos, but just to do a brief overview, you need to make sure that whatever audio interface you're using is showing up under setup. I'm using the Universal Audio Thunderbolt Apollo interface, so that's what's showing. It's set to 48 kilohertz and 1024 samples. If that's not showing up, you need to click under setup. Make sure your playback device Click the drop down menu. You'll see different ones listed. Make sure you're not using built in output. You don't want to be using the microphone and the speakers from your laptop. You always want it to be your audio interface. Okay, so you may see something like PreSonus Audio Box, 
whatever it is, make sure your interface is selected for the playback and the recording device. You don't have to record at 48 kilohertz. I just wanna recommend that if your computer can handle it, might as well set it to at least 48 kilohertz. For your interface, that may be something like I was mentioning earlier. For universal audio, I set my sample rate using their console software. If you're using a PreSonus or maybe even a Focusrite Scarlett, I believe you can change the sample rate straight from Studio One. With that being said, we wanna create a new song. So we're gonna hit this button here labeled new, and we're gonna title our song, whatever you intend it to be. I'm just gonna call this one acoustic guitar. Make sure your directory is set up properly. I have an external drive plugged in called my Studio One Terabyte. I'm gonna locate the folder I want to save the song in. I have a folder called songs. I'm gonna set up a new folder called Chris Green. And then inside that folder is where I wanna save this session. So make sure you have your session saved in the proper location. And again, it's got a drop down menu for the sample rate. I'll go ahead and change this to 48 kilohertz. And then we can hit the okay button. As soon as I hit okay, now I'm met with a fresh canvas on Studio One. Go down here to the browse button and just close that out because it just gets in the way, especially if you're doing analog recording like this. You can hit T on the keyboard to create a new track, or you can select this plus button that's up here on the top left. I wanna create a new audio track. An audio track are things that we're recording with microphones or things that we're recording direct. Anything that's happening in the real world outside of the computer, that's called an audio track. If it's an instrument track, that's basically a MIDI track. You're loading sounds from your computer that are coming out of your speakers. Audio is where we wanna be. So I'm gonna select audio track and I'm gonna call this one acoustic direct. I want one track, I'm gonna color it yellow. It's gonna be a mono track and I'm gonna use input one. So now I've got a track labeled acoustic direct. Why do I say direct? Well, my acoustic guitar has a plug because I'm gonna show you how to record with the plug and also with the microphone. So those of you out there that don't own a microphone, this is the time where you wanna grab your guitar cable and plug that into your audio interface, channel one. All right, here I have this tremendously long guitar cable. Just to show you here, the guitar cable is gonna look like this. I'm gonna take one end, plug it into my acoustic guitar. The other end is going into the high impedance input for my Apollo, which happens to be on the front of the interface. It's got a picture of a guitar. Your interface, if you're using like a Focus, Focusrite Scarlett, it'll have two combo jack inputs. So you can use either channel one or channel two. Then I'm gonna grab my headphones here. Make sure your headphones are plugged into your interface correct. Now I've got my headphones on, I've got my acoustic guitar plugged into channel one on the interface. This is how you would record the guitar direct. Now the first thing we need to do is once it's plugged in, we need to make sure the gain is set up correctly. So if you click this circle button next to acoustic direct, that's the record enable button. We're not recording just yet. As you can see, the monitoring is turned on. I'm gonna turn it off because on my software for my Apollo, I can actually monitor the audio coming in direct. So that way I don't hear any latency. So on my Apollo interface, I'm gonna unmute channel one. I'm gonna grab a pick and I'm gonna go ahead and strum a G chord. I can see that the meter is very low, so I need to turn the gain up on channel one. So I go to channel one, you probably have some sort of gain knob for your interface. Turn that up so that you're getting a healthy signal into your interface. All right, once you've got a healthy level set up, make sure it's not too loud. I'm gonna go back to Studio One. If you don't have access to this way of no latency monitoring or input monitoring, you can click this speaker button next to Acoustic Direct. And as you'll notice in your headphones, you'll actually be able to hear the audio. It may sound like it's lagging behind what you're actually playing, 
That's because when you're using the software monitoring of Studio One, there's always gonna be a little bit of latency. The nicer audio interfaces that you have, they'll have options for direct monitoring. So with the Apollo using their console software, I'm able to listen to it as it comes into the interface, not as it comes out of the software, if that makes sense. Majority of you out there, you're not gonna to wanna to have this input monitoring turned on, unless you have a really good PreSonus interface. Some of them have like zero latency monitoring. But as you can see on the screen, we have a healthy signal coming into Studio One, and it would be time to record, but I wanna set up a click track. Down here next to the metronome, if I click the metronome button, it is now blue. You can also use the code C on the keyboard. C will turn it on and off. I wanna turn the metronome on. I've got it set to 4-4 four, four timing. My tempo, let's set this to 76. To change the tempo, just click wherever you see this, either 68, whatever number you see above tempo, click it once, type in the number you want, then hit the enter key it will change the tempo. So now we're at 76. Now I'm ready to record. If I hit the record button down here, you're gonna hear the click track start playing, and then it's just up to me whenever I wanna start strumming along. One, two, three. When you're done recording, you can hit the spacebar button as you choose. For today's video, I'm not gonna play any specific song, just a simple chord progression. So that would be, let's take a listen now to what I just recorded. You can hit the C button again to mute the metronome. Let's listen to, this is what it sounds like recording direct from your acoustic. As you can hear, this way of recording sounds very boxy. It doesn't sound as bright, and it doesn't really sound like my acoustic guitar does in the room. That's why I was saying that a microphone is gonna get you actually a better signal. So what I wanna do is create a new track. I'm gonna call this one Acoustic Mic, and I want this to be on input two. So it's gonna create a new track, I want to make sure I hit this record button next to Acoustic Direct. I don't want to be recording Acoustic Direct, but I want to record enable Acoustic Mic. And again, click this blue speaker button to make sure the monitor is turned off. Now comes time for your microphone. So let's get a microphone cable and let's plug in our NT2A. I'm plugging into channel two of my audio interface. Now a condenser microphone needs to have what's called phantom power. So I'm gonna go back to my console or software. I'm gonna click this 48 volt button. And then on channel two, I need to do the same thing I was doing with my direct input. And I need to play and make sure I'm getting a healthy signal from the microphone. Okay, now I wanna monitor what's coming through the microphone instead of the direct input. I can actually hear my voice talking now through my headphones. Let's go back to Studio One, and now I'm gonna record again, but this time with the microphone track and not the direct input. Let's turn our metronome on, hit the C button, and then we'll hit record.
Now what we can do is hit the record button, go back to measure two. Let's solo the acoustic mic track, hit the S button. Now we're just going to be listening to what we recorded through the microphone. Let's compare that to the direct acoustic guitar. As you can hear, the microphone that we're using for the acoustic guitar sounded just like an acoustic guitar. A microphone is going to give you a lot more fidelity than using something like a pickup on your acoustic, but you might just want to blend the two together and get the best of both worlds, okay? I hope this video has helped you out on how to record the acoustic guitar. I'm sure you'll have more questions. Feel free to ask me questions in the comments section and hit the subscribe button as we delve even deeper into Studio One in the future. I'm Chris Green. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.